At some point in your life, you've pointlessly scrolled through social media, watched a TV show you don't care about, or just stood in the shower vacantly staring at the wall. But no matter how much time you've wasted, you probably haven't sat on a toilet for five days straight or watched all of one of those 10-hour YouTube videos. But some people actually have. So get comfy because we're about to take a look at some of the biggest wastes of time in history. And before you get your clever comments ready, no, watching this video is not on the list. Nice try, though. TV Marathon We've all stayed up late into the night watching TV because we just needed to know what would happen to Sansa Stark, who would win Squid Game, or just how much stranger, stranger things could get. But none of our watching habits could hold a candle to Alejandro Fragoso, who, in 2016, watched a butt-numbing 94 hours of TV straight. Alejandro and a few friends entered into a bid to obtain the world TV watching record while promoting a new video optimization software for a company called Cyberlink. One by one, however, his companions dropped out until only Alejandro remained. During his binge session, he watched shows including Bob's Burgers, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Battlestar Galactica, and Game of Thrones. But the experience was horrible taking a toll on his mind and body. At one point, during a short, health-mandated break, Alejandro began hallucinating a shopping list on the bathroom wall. After nearly four days of TV, Alejandro emerged victorious. It turned out he was a glutton for punishment, however. One year later, he claimed a similar record, spending 50 straight hours watching TV in virtual reality. It's not all bad, though. At least in VR, you wouldn't notice your body fusing to the sofa. Speaking of binge-watching, if you love listening to incredible facts and watching amazing stories for hours on end, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Hey, it's not time-wasting if you're learning. Alright, what have we got next? Hungry for pie. Let's talk about pie. And no, I don't mean the dessert. <clears throat> now that that joke's out of the way, pi, or 3.14, is one of the most useful numbers in all mathematics. Simply put, pi represents the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter. No matter how big or small a circle is, if you divide its circumference by its diameter, you're gonna end up with a fresh, delicious pie. Darn it! Pi is also interesting because those decimal points after 3 go on forever. Pi is an infinite number, though most of the time, you just need 3.14. This is what makes William Shanks' life ambition so crazy. A school teacher, born in 1812, Shanks decided he was going to sit down and calculate pi for the rest of his life. According to Shanks, he would spend the morning calculating pi and the evening checking his work every day. By the end of his life in 1882, Shanks had calculated pi to 707 decimal points. Now, there are two main reasons why this was a waste of time. First, these many digits of pi are practically useless. Even rocket scientists at NASA claim they only use pi up to 16 decimal places. Even worse, though, was the fact that Shanks was wrong. He'd made a crucial mistake in his calculations after digit 527, meaning the next 180 digits he calculated were a complete waste. At the end of the day, Shanks' pi ended up leaving a bitter taste in his mouth. Gotta catch them all! Unlike Pogs and Beanie Babies, Pokemon actually made it out of the 90s. In fact, the series is currently more popular than ever, with eight generations of games and almost 900 collectible critters. That may sound like a lot to you, but at least one gamer looked at the series' tagline, Gotta Catch Em All, and thought, Challenge Accepted. In the games, Pokemon has a very, very rare chance of being shiny meaning their colors are slightly different. For example, a shiny Bulbasaur is a more vibrant green, whereas a shiny Pikachu 
as gray-tipped ears. How rare are these Pokemon? Well, in the newer games, a Pokemon has a 1 in 4,096 chance of being shiny, while in the older games, it's a staggering 1 in 8,192. Most players will go their entire Poke rears without ever seeing one. Japanese player Qdon is not most players, though. Because in 2021, he announced he had caught a shiny variant of every single Pokemon out there. Let's do some quick math here. Going by those odds, Qdon must have fought around 6.5 million Pokemon battles to catch every one. If we're generous and assume that each only took 15 seconds, that still equates to a total playtime of 1,128 days. Now, he may have traded with other players in the newer games to speed the process up, but it still must have taken at least three years. In fact, we know it did, because another Pokemaniac named Robert Meehan did the same thing in 2016. Unlike Qdan, we know Meehan's process, the totally random, insane way. It took him three years to get all the shinies in 2016, but since then, more Pokemon have been released, and he continues his quest to this day. I guess these guys really are the very best, like no one ever was. Special Agent Kitty We love cats for their adorable faces and lazy attitudes. What they aren't known for, however, is their ability to follow complex instructions. This didn't stop the CIA, who in the 1960s enacted their craziest ever scheme, Operation Acoustic Kitty, in an attempt to raise, equip, and train a house cat into an American super spy. The thought process was that cats were so common that no one would think twice if they saw one, let alone assume they were being tailed or recorded by one. The acoustic kitty had a microphone placed in its ear, plus a wiry antenna and transmitter implanted in its fur. After adding all the robotics, the long and arduous process of training the cat began. Acoustic Kitty would often get distracted, wander off, and otherwise ignore its handlers entirely. And all this equipment and training cost a whopping $20 million in total. Then, finally, after five long years, the CIA released Acoustic Kitty into the field for its first training mission. But just minutes after letting the cat go, the poor thing was hit by a taxi and sadly didn't make it. After five years of training, Operation Acoustic Kitty turned out to be a complete waste of time and money that never even reached its target. I'd like to say curiosity killed the cat, but it was probably just trying to escape the CIA. RuneScape Cape If you grew up in the early 2000s, there's a good chance you remember RuneScape. This was a mass multiplayer online role-playing game that worked in browser. This meant it was a perfect game to play in a minimized window just out of the teacher's sight, but it wasn't anything special. Well, to most people, anyway. The Max Cape in RuneScape is an item so ridiculously tedious to get, it inspired its own lingo, cape grinding. The cape requires players to have two things, an obscene amount of money and an obscene amount of time. In order to buy it, you need to get each of your characters 23 skills to level 99. If you're wondering how long that takes, some skills can reach max level in as little as 30 hours whereas some can take over 130. There are guides out there that claim this can take up to 2,000 hours, or three straight months of playing. If you're wondering who would ever do this, the answer may shock you. According to the people at RuneScape themselves, over 21,000 people have achieved level 99 in all skills. If this wasn't bad enough, one player by the name of Hauke got the cape on the hardest difficulty in the game, taking just under 5,000 hours of their life. All for a piece of virtual clothing that just tells the world, I have a lot of free time. Toilet Trooper 
I can personally relate to this next waste of time because it involves spending a long, long, long time on the toilet. The man you're currently looking at is Jimmy Dufresne, and this is his claim to fame. In 2019, the Belgian man decided that he wanted to break the record for the longest time sat on the toilet. Dufresne was training to be a bus driver at the time and figured he may as well get some sitting practice in. He ended up perched on his toilet for a stomach-churning 116 hours, just under five days. During that time, Dufresne ate, slept, and had conversations on a special toilet set up in the middle of a bar just for the funny event. Unfortunately, this meant the toilet wasn't actually functional, so Dufresne was permitted a five-minute break every hour, which often saw him running from one toilet to another. Still, it's a gut-busting record I don't think will soon be beat. If only he'd been watching TV the whole time, he would have beaten two records. The Superconducting Super Disappointment If you head down to Texas and take a short drive out from the town of Waxahachie, you'll be met by an enormous, unassuming ditch. Looking at it, you probably wouldn't think much. You definitely wouldn't think the government paid nearly $2.5 billion to dig it. This is the now dead Superconducting Super Collider, an enormous, ambitious, and sadly abandoned scientific endeavor. The Super Collider was going to be a giant tunnel 54 miles in circumference that scientists would use to accelerate and smash tiny particles together. By doing this, they'd be able to study some really crazy things, including collisions that haven't happened since the Big Bang. Does that sound a little ambitious for Texas? The US government thought so too. The project was first proposed in 1976, and work began in the late 1980s, but not long after, the Super Collider's cost began to balloon. Originally budgeted at around $4 billion, by the early 90s, its estimate was actually closer to a bank breaking $12 billion. In 1993, President Clinton signed a bill officially canceling the project. What was Texas left with? More than 17 years of wasted time, a 14-mile-wide series of holes, and a $2.4 billion bill. Oh, and a very big, very expensive ditch. Can't forget that. 1 million wrist cramps If you've ever been in an argument on the internet, then you know the pain of typing out a long, agonizing series of words no one will ever read. That said, no amount of debate in a comment section could ever compare to what Australian retiree Les Stewart achieved in 1998. His journey began way back in April 1982, when he decided he was going to earn a world record, no matter how insane or inane it was. Les began typing numbers, starting with 1. He didn't just type 1, he typed O-N-E. Then he moved on to T-W-O. Then 3, with the eventual goal of making it to 1 million. And while this may not seem like much at first, imagine typing 366,998 before typing... 366,999, knowing you still have 633,001 more words to type. According to Les, in order to achieve this goal, he typed for 20 minutes every single hour he was awake. As he began his quest in the 1980s, he did this using a typewriter, and it took him 16 years and 19,990 sheets of paper, or as Les would put it, 19,990. Venus Genius Back in 18th century France, Guillaume Le Gentil was a highly respected astronomer with an equally respected head of hair. In 1761, he decided he wanted to record the transit of Venus, a rare phenomenon where the planet passes in front of the sun. To do this, he journeyed all the way from his home in France to India. Unfortunately, and this isn't a joke, 
Ye old thugs stole his ye old wallet, which delayed his journey. By the time he reached India, the brief window to observe the transit was over. Guillaume didn't give up, though. He decided he would wait in India for eight years for the next visible transit. During this time, Guillaume wrote to the Royal Academy and his family back in France, continuing his studies in India. When Guillaume's second chance finally came in 1769, it was too cloudy. Guillaume couldn't see a thing. Defeated, he finally decided to go home. But on the way back, his ship crashed and he ended up stranded because life hated Guillaume. When he eventually arrived back home, 11 years had passed. But his story doesn't end there. Guillaume discovered that none of his letters had ever arrived. The ferryman had been taking his money and dumping them in the sea. He had been declared dead years ago, his position at the academy had been filled, his wife had remarried, and if you can take any more, his relatives had divided up his estate. For the love of God, people, look after your wallets. Capital Conundrum What's the biggest city you can think of? New York? Not pretty big. London? Yeah, that's big too. But in terms of land mass, Naypyidaw in Myanmar is four times larger than either of them. If you didn't know that, don't feel too bad, because googling that question will bring up dozens of answers that leave out Naypyidaw. Why does everyone forget Naypyidaw? Well, it's probably because the city is basically one giant ghost town. It boasts just 131 people per square mile, which is nothing compared to London's 7,700 or New York's 27,000. Despite its size, this makes it one of the most vacant capitals in the world. But how did this happen? Well, in 2002, the Myanmar government made the bizarre decision to move the capital city to a jungle in the middle of nowhere because the old capital of Yangon was apparently too crowded and congested. Ten years and four billion dollars later, construction of Naypyidaw was finally finished. It has fast Wi-Fi, a couple of golf courses, and even a safari park. It's just missing people who for some reason didn't want to move to the middle of nowhere. This has led Naypyida to become an eerily vacant city. The shining jewel of the capital is no longer the giant gold pagoda at its center, but the insane 20-lane highway leading to the city, which is always empty. Personally, I think Myanmar should put this thing to use. Can you imagine a Fast and the Furious chase scene here? The Filmarillion Sometimes you post something on the internet and it gets a bunch of likes, retweets, or reposts, and it's a nice feeling. You can have too much of a good thing, however, which is what 4chan poster UTV discovered in 2013. UTV was a pretty unremarkable user, mostly posting about sports. It was strange then when he discovered he had a very, very dedicated fan. An anonymous user kept showing up wherever he posted, praising him and demonstrating a shocking familiarity with his history. The user claimed to have printed out UTV's posts, giving them to the homeless, and even made a belt out of them. Many thought the user was a troll. After all, the idea of someone becoming obsessed with a 4chan sports poster is ludicrous, right? Well, no. One day, the poster claimed his parents discovered his UTV paraphernalia and forced him to get rid of it all. He made one last post, the Filmarillion, a 97-page upload of all his UTV obsessions. In the Filmarillion, you can find an apartment the creator imagined he could live with UTV in, a script for a TV show starring them both, 3D-modeled cities made from his posts, and many more weird endeavors. Did this guy seriously have nothing better to do? Well, shortly after this, UTV, understandably, stopped posting. Capone Zone In the 1920s, Al Capone was the biggest mobster in town. Capone wasn't just the kingpin of one of the largest criminal outfits the U.S. had ever seen, but was also at the top of the FBI's most wanted list. 
Funny how that works. Not long after he was arrested, rumors started spreading about some great secret treasure of his that was never recovered. When a secret vault was discovered in the catacombs of Capone's hideout in the 1980s, it captured the country's imagination. Reporter Geraldo Riviera leapt on the story, looking for a way to restart his career after ending his partnership with ABC. So he pitched a massive special, The Mystery of Al Capone's Vault, in which they'd open it on live TV, with a production cost of $900,000. For over two hours, Riviera shouted over construction workers and jackhammers, theorizing what could be in the 60-year-old vault to 30 million viewers. America was abuzz with excitement about what could be inside. Was it cash, jewels, maybe a secret fortune? When the vault was finally open, the answer surprised everyone. It was nothing. Absolutely nothing. Worse than that, it was dirty nothing. The entire recorded waste of time is available on Riviera's website, and you have to hand it to the guy for taking the embarrassment in his stride. Well, maybe in 30 years we can expect a live stream where a down-and-out PewDiePie opens a long-forgotten Fortnite loot box. Nyan Cat Crazy This is Nyan Cat, the adorable, rainbow-pooping, pop-tart cat hybrid that took the internet by storm over 10 years ago. Although Nyan Cat was just a few frames of animation over a 10-second audio loop of a Japanese pop song, it found its way into all of our hearts and ears. It didn't take long for tributes, imitations, and unauthorized merchandise to creep its way onto the internet. One such piece of Nyan original content was a mind-boggling 10-hour loop of the meme. This was clearly a joke and not a video intended for actual viewing. Well, the internet is full of stupid people doing stupid things for stupid reasons. In 2012, a mysterious user called The Game Pro uploaded evidence of them doing the unthinkable, watching the whole thing, the whole 10 hour video. For the entire duration, he bopped along, ate his meals, and tried to entertain himself by tapping. Amazingly, he made it, and when he reached the end, he only had this to say. Hell yeah. Either this guy has nothing better to do, or he just really, really loves Nyan Cat. Revel in Failure In 2006, Morgan Stanley invested in the construction of a $2.4 billion behemoth, the Revel Casino and Resort. Originally planned as two giant casinos, the Revel was intended to attract a new, more upmarket clientele to Atlantic City, New Jersey. Six grueling years later, a lone Revel resort opened its doors to the public. Unfortunately for Atlantic City, the Revel wasn't quite the tourist trap that had been envisioned. And by that I mean it was a billion dollars in debt and filing for bankruptcy less than a year later. As it turns out, opening a giant casino in a city already known for casinos isn't a great way to attract new tourists. After shutting down, the Revel sold to Glenn Straub for $82 million, less than 4% of its construction cost. Straub tentatively renamed the casino to 10, but ultimately just let the building rot. AC Oceanwalk then bought it for $200 million. After three owners and three name changes, the Ocean Casino opened its doors in June 2019 and enjoyed a few months of business before being forced to close down in March 2020 due to COVID-19. Today, the Ocean Casino is still chugging along and still being pawned off to new buyers. If you're interested, you can stay in the cursed hotel. Just avoid the 12 floors that are still empty in the middle of the building. Fan fiction or fan fact Many great works of literature have been written in the English language throughout history, and many of those have been pretty long. Can you guess the longest one ever? What if I tell you the names of some of the chapters? <clears throat> Hedgehogs of Evil, Mario the Dishonest. No? Uh, how about Yubes Belly, Fat Alien Yoshi's Stomach? 
Well, if you didn't guess, these are chapters from a work called the Subspace Emissaries World Conquest, a piece of Nintendo fan fiction. In it, you can expect to see various video game characters fighting, playing sports, and saving the world. Oh, and it just so happens to be the single longest work of fiction in the English language. That's right, author Aura Channeler Chris, who claims to read solely fan fiction, has written a story more than 4,100,000 words long. That's longer than Ulysses, Infinite Jest, and the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy combined. As of 2021, the fanfic has an insane 221 chapters, and it's a sequel, so the entire saga is actually even longer. It was started way back in 2008, with its last update in 2018. By that math, this guy's currently written more than 410,000 words of fic a year. That means every three years, he writes more words than are in the entire Harry Potter saga for free. Well, at least this fan fiction was a creative outlet. The real scary waste of time is that some reviewers on fanfiction.net claim to have read the entire story multiple times. Wow. The mother of all time wasters. Whatever your record for time wasting is, there's no way you can beat Simeon of the Stylites. This guy makes everyone else we've mentioned look like an Olympic sprinter, because Simeon sat down, shut his eyes, and did nothing for 37 years. Simeon was born to a poor family around 390 CE in what is now Syria. Simeon saw the quiet, modest, and contemplative lives of the monks around him and said, hold my beer. Not that he was ever coming back for it. In an attempt to achieve enlightenment, or perhaps just show the other punk monks how it was done, Simeon decided to sit on a pillar and think. And there he sat, day after day, night after night. He survived only after several local boys grew concerned for his health and began leaving him food and milk. After a while, Simeon became a bit of a celebrity, and soon the locals had leaned a ladder up on the pillar so visitors could chat with him and ask for guidance. Imagine the kind of state you must be in to ask the pillar dude for advice. Oh, and if you're wondering if this is just a folk tale or some kind of ancient gossip, dozens of people wrote about Simeon, so it looks like this guy was the real deal. Simeon reportedly sat on that pillar for anywhere between 37 and 42 years before eventually dying up there. He was made a saint for his efforts, so if he didn't achieve enlightenment, at least he achieved fame. The real tragedy is Simeon apparently inspired copycats, and those guys don't even get the honor of posting first. There you have it. The greatest wastes of time in all of history. What do you think? Reckon you can beat any of these records? Let me know some of your creative wastes of time in the comments below. And thanks for watching.